Just over a year ago now, I had no idea what AWS Kinesis was, but it just so happened I joined a company that used it quite extensively. So since then, I've had a lot of experience using Kinesis. The only problem is I never really set it up um, you know, it's one of those things where I joined a company where the thing was kind of already set up for you. So all I've done is kind of create new code bases that make use of the Kinesis data. So in this video, I'm kind of going to go over what Kinesis is, how to set it up and how to actually use it with Node.js. But you can kind of use what I'm going to go through with basically any language. Uh, AWS has SDKs for a lot of languages. So you should be able to make use of what I go through in this video in your language of choice. So let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is set up the Kinesis stream. This was surprisingly simple. Like a lot of the times AWS's services have a ton of configuration options. Like if you configure a VPS or something, there's just tons of stuff that you can go through. The Kinesis stream is actually, there's not really much going on. Um, you only really have to put a name in, which is fairly straightforward, and then choose data stream capacity. So you can choose either on demand or provisioned. These both have pros and cons. Um, on demand, the, the sort of benefit of that is that you can go from zero to kind of however many resources you need. So like the throughput will kind of scale as you need it to. Um, the only problem with that is that the cost will also scale. So it can be kind of unpredictable. Um, provisioned will kind of provision a, a set amount of resources. So you have like consistent throughput. So if you know your throughput, like how much you're gonna need to process, then this would be a good option because it also gives you a guaranteed price. So every month you'll pay the same uh, in theory. Uh, obviously the downside of that is if you have like spikes in traffic or whatever and you need a higher throughput, then it's not going to scale. Uh, but, you know, obviously you choose what you want. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to go with on demand and that's basically it. It sets up everything. Uh, we've got a few things here. So we've got uh, monitoring is po probably the one that you're going to be most bothered about to see, you know, what's going on. Uh, but then we've also got other things, configuration, data viewer would be quite useful. Um, and, and well, that's pretty much it really. <laughs> so we'll get on with uh, creating the producer. So this is what's actually going to send data to the Kinesis stream. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be using Node.js for this. Uh, the reason being is just because of how simple it is. Um, it's literally just set up the code and then run node index.js and we're away, so there's no real setup involved. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to actually find documentation on how to actually do this in Node.js. In fact, really do it in anything other than Java. Like that, that seems to be um, the, the main thing to use, but I, I don't know how many people actually use Java for this kind of stuff, but thankfully there is a Node.js SDK available. Uh, it just took, took me a bit of time. Um, I managed to find the AWS docs for this, and, the, and if you kind of go to I think it's a code example section and you can find Kinesis listed and then you scroll down and there's literally um, code there that, that tells you exactly how to actually post records to the Kinesis stream. So it'll also tell you, you know, what you need to install and stuff. So that's very useful. It just took a bit of time to actually find it. You won't see it in the video because I've cut a lot of it out, but it did actually take me like a good 10 minutes to find some good resources. Um, but yeah, once you found them, you realize how simple it actually is. So yeah, you want to create like an empty project and run npm init dash y. In my case, I run I ran uh, npm init dash y in the wrong directory. So make sure you cd into the right directory first, the one that you've just created. So yeah, once you've done that, uh, install the SDK and I also stole, installed .env. I stored the access key and the secret access key in a .env file, but you I mean, as long as you're not going to push it up to GitHub or anything, then you could probably just paste it direct, directly into the code base if you're just kind of testing things out and that'll be fine. So yeah, you just import .env, uh, import the SDK, and then uh, set up the client. Uh, so this is one thing to talk about, which is a bit, it, it was a bit confusing and it took me a bit of time to kind of search around to see, you know, what, what I needed to do. But there is something called partition key. So... <laughs> what partition key does is it will determine which shard your uh, record gets sent to. So 
there's at least by default um from what i could see on on my dashboard there was four shards that are created and this is kind of part of uh kinesis's scalability so you get these four shards that you can send data to and i'm, I'm sure you can i'm sure like more will be provisioned if if needed um but basically they use the partition key and i think they kind of like uh hash it and then figure out based on that hash they can figure out which shard you actually uh send that kinesis record to so it's a bit confusing but I think the logic is if you had records that are kind of related to each other, then you would use the same partition key to make sure that they all go to the same shard. So if you had like user events and you wanted to keep all the user events together or all the events for maybe a particular user, you might do user dash events dash and then maybe the user's ID and then it will send all the events to the same shard and that way, I don't know, you kind of have them all available, I suppose. Uh, if you don't care about that, then you can just kind of put a random ID in and then it'll send it to whatever shard, you know, whatever shard that uh, ID kind of hashes to, if that makes sense. In my case, I didn't really care. Um, I was just sending random events. So I uh, used the crypto function to generate a random UUID and then use that. So that was fairly straightforward. Uh, and then, yeah, effectively all you do is do client.send and then you do new put records command. So if you're using a different language, but there's an SDK support and then this will be the this will be the function that you use. And then effectively you put use the stream ARN and then you pass in the records and each record has data and partition key uh, as the two properties. And that's pretty much it. You know, it took me a little bit of kind of debugging to figure out like it just wasn't working at, at certain points. So after a bit of debugging, I managed to figure it out. And for some reason, the records weren't showing up in the data viewer. I don't know if that's kind of meant to happen or if it was like an issue if something has gone wrong but um yeah if you look at monitoring then you can see that the um records are actually being put in you can see that there's for the put records thing uh, or incoming data you can see that there is actually some data there so from what i can tell the producer is working now that we have data flowing through our Kinesis stream, all we need to do is consume that data somehow. Uh, in our case, we're just going to create a very simple Lambda function, which is just going to print the data out to the CloudWatch logs. So the first thing you need to do is actually create the Lambda function, fairly straightforward. And then we need to add Kinesis as a trigger. So AWS allows you to trigger the invocation of the Lambda function using a lot of different services on AWS. Um, so if you look for in configuration and then trigger, if you look for Kinesis and set it up, then you're probably going to run into a little bit of an issue, which is a permissions issue. Uh, if you ever dealt with AWS's permission system, you know that it's complete ass. So, you know, fumble around trying to figure out how that works. Uh, in my case, uh, after about five minutes of trying to figure out what was going on, uh, I just went to the Lambda's role that gets kind of automatically created by AWS. And I basically just gave it full access to Kinesis because I couldn't be bothered figuring out what specific permissions it needed. So once that was done, I was able to actually add the trigger. And then all I did was basically loop through the records that you get sent um, so what will happen is, and you can set this up in the configuration, but you can choose how many records you want to get from the Kinesis stream at any one time. So the default is 100. So what you need to do is you need to loop through and then you can process each record. So what you're seeing now is me just kind of figuring out what's going on. Um, so I'm just going to log data to the console, send a few records to the Kinesis stream and then look into CloudWatch logs. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty sure the first time I did this, I forgot to even deploy the code. So you're not seeing anything <laughs> in the logs. Um, but once I figure that out, you'll actually start to see something. So I deploy the code. There we go. Should have done that in the first place. But there we go. And now we can see stuff. So we can actually see the record coming through, which is good. Uh, after a bit of searching, I realized that what I need to do is actually decode the record. So the record gets base64 encoded. So when you process it, you need to decode it. So you can just use, if you're using JavaScript, um, which is kind of the default for Lambda, then you can do buffer from and specify base64 and then say you want to do it to string UTF-8. So yeah, once we've done that, we can actually see what's going on in the CloudWatch log. So, so we can see that the data is actually coming through now and we can also send through objects, which is a big thing. So um, yeah, you can see me here struggling to send through an object. Uh, it does actually give me an error. 
Uh, you have to stringify it. So if you're using JavaScript, you can use json.stringify and then that should work and it, it should actually send through an object, which is much more useful because obviously it, in a, in a JSON object, you can store, you know, different properties and stuff. So instead of just sending through a string, uh, you can send through an object, which is nice. And there we go. You can see it's printing out the object with the message. I don't even know what that says. I can't, <laughs> I'm watching it on the video editor and I can't even see, does sending objects work? I think is what that says. And there we go. You can see that uh, I've sent an object. And that's pretty much it. Surprisingly enough, that's Kinesis. Um, from that point onwards, you can process whatever's in that stream. So if you've got, I don't know, like I said, in, in you know the real world, world use case that my company has, um, the stream that comes through will have things like you know the event type. So it, it'll be an object and, it, and we have to do basically what you just saw me do there where I decode it is exactly what I do in you know the production environment when I'm using um, Kinesis normally. So I decode it and then it has things like event type uh, and then information about the customer and, and, you know, if it's added to a basket, it has information about the product, all that kind of stuff. So you, you know, you could do something similar with whatever your use case is. And that's it. Surprisingly simple. Like when I thought about Kinesis and, and, and setting it up and stuff, I actually thought it was going to be really difficult. Turns out not. So hopefully you can figure out a good use case because I still need a good use case for me to use it personally. Because I, 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 for some reason, I'm really quite excited by Kinesis and Kafka and stuff like that. Kind of like these data streams. I think they're really interesting. I just don't have a reason to use them, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. So hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you have a good, better idea. Not Maybe not a good idea. Uh, I think you need to kind of try it yourself before you'll have a good idea. But hopefully you have a better idea of uh, what Kinesis is and what it's used for. And hopefully this helped. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.